The Slender Man, also spelled Slenderman, is a fictional supernatural character that originated as a creepypasta internet meme created by Something Awful Forum user Eric Knudsen, also known as Victor Surge, in 2009. He is depicted as a thin, unnaturally tall humanoid with a featureless head and face, wearing a black suit. Stories of the Slender Man commonly feature him stalking, abducting or traumatizing people, particularly children. The Slender Man has become a pop culture icon, although he is not confined to a single narrative but appears in many disparate works of fiction, typically composed online. Fiction relating to The Slender Man encompasses many media, including literature, art, and video series such as Marble Hornets, 2009-2014, wherein he is known as the operator. The character has appeared in the video game Slender, The Eight Pages, 2012, and its successor Slender, The Arrival, 2013, as well as inspiring the Enderman in Minecraft. He has also appeared in a 2015 film adaptation of Marble Hornets, where he was portrayed by Doug Jones, and an eponymous 2018 film, where he was portrayed by Javier Botet. Beginning in 2014, a moral panic occurred over the slender man after readers of his fiction were connected to several violent acts, particularly a near-fatal stabbing of a 12-year-old girl in Waukesha, Wisconsin. The stabbing inspired the documentary Beware the Slenderman, which was released in 2016. The Slender Man was created on June 10, 2009, on a thread in the Something Awful Internet Forum. The thread was a Photoshop contest in which users were challenged to create paranormal images. Forum poster Eric Knudsen, under the pseudonym Victor Surge, contributed two black and white images of groups of children to which he added a tall, thin, spectral figure wearing a black suit. Although previous entries had consisted solely of photographs, Serge supplemented his submission with snatches of text supposedly from witnesses describing the abductions of the groups of children and giving the character the name The Slender Man. We didn't want to go, we didn't want to kill them, but its persistent silence and outstretched arms horrified and comforted us at the same time. One of two recovered photographs from the Sterling City Library blaze notable for being taken the day which 14 children vanished and for what is referred to as the Slender Man. Deformities cited as film defects by officials. Fire at library occurred one week later. Actual photograph confiscated as evidence. These additions effectively transformed the photographs into a work of fiction. Subsequent posters expanded upon the character, adding their own visual or textual contributions. Knudsen was inspired to create the Slender Man primarily by Zack. Parsons that insidious beast, Stephen King's The Mist, reports of Shadow People, Mothman, and the Madgasser of Mattoon. Other inspirations for the character were the tall man from the 1979 film Phantasm, H.P. Lovecraft, the surrealist work of William S. Burroughs, and the survival horror video games Silent Hill and Resident Evil. Knudsen's intention was to formulate something whose motivations can barely be comprehended, and which caused unease and terror in a general population. Other pre-existing fictional or legendary creatures which are similar to the Slender Man include, the gentleman, black-suited, pale, bald demons from the Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode Hush, men in black, many accounts of which grant them an uncanny appearance with an unnatural walk and oriental features, and the question, a DC Comics superhero with a blank face, whose secret identity is Victor Sage, a name similar to Knudsen's alias Victor Surge. In her book, Folklore, Horror Stories, and The Slender Man, The Development of an Internet Mythology, Professor Shira Chess of the University of Georgia connected The Slender Man to ancient folklore about fairies. Like fairies, The Slender Man is otherworldly, with motives that are often difficult to grasp, like fairies, his appearance is vague and often shifts to reflect what the viewer wants or fears to see, and, like fairies, the Slender Man calls the woods and wild places his home and kidnaps children. The Slender Man soon went viral, spawning numerous works of fan art, cosplay, and online fiction known as creepypasta horror stories told in short snatches of easily copyable text that spread from site to site. Divorced from its original creator, The Slender Man became the subject of myriad stories by multiple authors within an overarching mythos. Many aspects of the Slender Man mythos first appeared on the original Something Awful thread. One of the earliest additions was added by a forum user named Thoroab, who created a folklore story set in 16th century Germany involving a character called Der Grossmann, 
which was implied to be an early reference to the Slender Man. The first video series involving the Slender Man evolved from a post on the Something Awful thread by user C.E. Gars. It tells of a fictional film school friend named Alex Crowley, who had stumbled upon something troubling while shooting his first feature-length project, Marble Hornets. The video series, published in found footage style on YouTube, forms an alternate reality game describing the filmer's fictional experiences with the Slender Man. The ARG also incorporates a Twitter feed and an alternate YouTube channel created by a user named Tuthirk. As of 2013, Marble Hornets had over 250,000 subscribers around the world and had received 55 million views. Other Slender Man themed YouTube serials followed, including Every Man Hybrid and Tribe 12. In 2012, The Slender Man was adapted into a video game titled Slender, The Eight Pages. Within its first month of release, the game was downloaded over 2 million times. Several popular variants of the game followed, including Slenderman's Shadow and Slender Man for iOS, which became the second most popular app download. The sequel to Slender, The Eight Pages, Slender, The Arrival, was released in 2013. Several independent films about The Slender Man have been released or are in development, including Entity and The Slender Man, released free online after a $10,000 Kickstarter campaign. In 2013, it was announced that Marble Hornets would become a feature film. Because the Slender Man's fictional mythology has evolved without an official canon for reference, his appearance, motives, habits, and abilities are not fixed but change depending on the storyteller. He is most commonly described as very tall and thin with unnaturally long, tentacle-like arms, or merely tentacles, which he can extend to intimidate or capture. Prey. In most stories his face is white and featureless, but occasionally his face appears differently to anyone who sees it. He appears to be wearing a dark suit and tie. The Slender Man is often associated with the forest and slash or abandoned locations and has the ability to teleport. Proximity to the Slender Man is often said to trigger a slender sickness, a rapid onset of paranoia, nightmares, and delusions accompanied by nosebleeds. Early stories featured him targeting children or young adults. Some featured young adults driven insane or to act on his behalf, while others did not, and others claim that investigating the Slender Man will draw his attention. The web series Marble Hornets established the idea of proxies, humans who fall under the Slender Man's influence, though initially, they were simply violently insane. Rather than puppets of the Slender Man Marble Hornets also introduced the idea that the Slender Man could interfere with video and audio recordings, as well as the Slender Man symbol, which became a common trope of Slender fiction. Graphic violence and body horror are uncommon in the Slender Man mythos, with many narratives choosing to leave the fate of his victims obscure. Shira Chess notes that it is important to note that few of the retellings identify exactly what kind of monster the Slender Man might be, and what his specific intentions are these points all remain mysteriously and usefully vague. Media scholar and folklorist Andrew Peck attributes the success of the Slender Man to its highly collaborative nature, because the character and its motives are shrouded in mystery, users can easily adapt existing Slender Man tropes and imagery to create new stories. This ability for users to tap into the ideas of others while also supplying their own help to inspire the collaborative culture that arose surrounding the Slender Man. Instead of privileging the choices of certain creators as canonical, this collaborative culture informally locates ownership of the creature across the community. In these respects, the Slender Man is similar to campfire stories or urban legends, and the character's success comes from enabling both social interaction and personal acts of creative expression. Although nearly all users understand that the Slender Man is not real, they suspend that disbelief in order to become more engrossed when telling or listening to stories. This adds a sense of authenticity to Slender Man legend performances and blurs the lines between legend and reality, keeping the creature as an object of legend dialectic. This ambiguity has led some to some confusion over the character's origin and purpose. Only five months after his creation, George Norrie's Coast to Coast AM, a radio call-in show devoted to the paranormal and conspiracy theories, began receiving callers asking about the Slender Man. Two years later, an article in the Minneapolis Star Tribune described his origins as difficult to pinpoint. Eric Knudsen has commented that many people, despite understanding that the Slender Man was created on the Something Awful forums, 
still entertain the possibility that he might be real. Tell me your favorite fictional characters and why in the comments below the video. You might see yours in our next video.